The title of this sermon is The Faith of a Child, and we have certainly seen the faith of our children this morning. Our scripture reading comes from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. You can turn with me in your Bibles, or you can follow along in your order of worship. 1 Samuel chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. And again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord. For your servant is listening. So Samuel went down and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. God was silent. Even Eli who served the Lord in the temple, had not received a word from the Lord. And instead of it being a priest who was the first to hear from God in those days, it was a boy, a child, who the Bible tells us did not yet know the Lord. The Lord was finally speaking, and he had chosen a child to speak to. Think back to your own childhood. Did you hear from the Lord? Do you hear from the Lord now? Did you, or if you are a child here today, do you feel connected to God? As a child, I remember fervently trusting that God would keep me safe. I remember praying for the whole world each and every night. I would say, God bless the whole world and trusting that God would keep everybody safe. I remember making up songs of praise to God and singing them as loudly as I could. I remember feeling deeply connected to God. And that connection lasted through my teenage years, through threats and scares and hormones. I can remember believing with all of my heart that even if there was no one else I could rely on, I could rely on God. And I did. Well, maybe that was or is your childhood as well. Perhaps as a child, you felt or currently feel deeply connected to God. And you fully trusted that God was there and that God was listening. But somewhere along the way, we as adults sometimes lose that level of trust. We stop fully trusting that God is there in the same way that we did as children. We lose that childlike faith and we start to question, is God still there even though this happened? Why didn't God stop this? Why did this happen? When we are children, we are dependent on others from the very first breath that we take. From the moment we are born, we depend on our parents to take care of us. 
And as we grow and become preschoolers, we still depend on others for so much in our lives. We trust that our parents will take care of us. We trust that they will feed us and give us what we need. And that dependency and trust as children can make it easier for us to depend on God and trust in him. We just believe that God is with us. We trust that God is listening to us. We trust that God will keep us safe. We don't question God's love because we feel it around us. As one author says, we are born with a spiritual capacity. We all come into this world with an ability to connect and relate to ourselves, to one another, to the world around us, and to the very God who created us. And perhaps this is one idea that Jesus had in mind when he said that we should have faith like little children. Perhaps Jesus was speaking about the fact that children come into the world sensing the immediate and real presence of the living, transcendent God. Well, we find this to be true in our passage in Samuel. The Bible tells us that Samuel did not yet know the Lord. And yet, Samuel did hear the Lord's voice calling. And at first, he thought it was the voice of Eli. But in a time when no one was hearing from God, Samuel did. Samuel a child, sensed the presence of God, and he was connected to the Lord even if he didn't yet recognize it. Eli was the one who helped Samuel see that it was God who was speaking to him. And so as a community of believers, it is our task to help the children among us recognize the voice of God. It is our task to fan the divine spark in them, to help children recognize the presence of God around them. But too often, our society does the opposite. In fact, as children hear from our society that they must choose between science and religion, they may start to close themselves off to feeling God's presence. As children learn how the world works, and feel as if they are being forced to choose between God and science, they may start to distance themselves from the spirituality that was so vital to them in the first years of their lives. And that divine flame may seem to burn out as we engage in a society and culture that seems to value the tangible over the intangible, the known over the unknown, and mastery over mystery. In our society, it can seem as if there's no place for science and religion to work together. It sometimes feels like we must make a choice instead of seeing that, in fact, science can add to our awe and understanding of God's creation and that God created these things to work together. Is this where you find yourself as an adult or a teenager? Our society places a high value on the things we can see. We want to live in the known because the unknown tends to be uncomfortable and frightening. We value mastering things, excelling in things, and understanding things around us instead of resting in the mystery of the unknown. We value our independence and our ability to care for ourselves instead of relying on God in our day-to-day -day lives. And I say that knowing that I am guilty of that too. I am guilty of believing that I can take care of myself. In fact, I've been trying to do that since I was a kid. And my favorite sentence as a young child seemed to be, I do it myself, whether or not I could actually do it. Well, there are times when I find myself fully relying on God only when everything around me is falling apart. And the last year has shown us just how much we aren't in control and just how much we can't do for ourselves. And that has been a difficult lesson to learn. 
And yet, by accepting that so much is out of our control, perhaps we have also found ourselves relying more on God than we have in the past. Perhaps we have become more open to holding our hands out and asking God to take care of us. Perhaps we have become more open to trusting that God knows and sees everything, even when we cannot. Perhaps we have become closer to having the faith of a child. Carl Rayner says that childhood is infinite openness, and the mature childhood of the adult is the attitude in which we bravely and trustfully maintain an infinite openness in all circumstances, and despite the experience of life, which seems to invite us to close ourselves. So in a nutshell, we grow closer to God when we open ourselves to God. When we bravely open ourselves to trusting God no matter what happens, when we bravely give control of our lives over to God instead of solely trusting in ourselves, we grow closer to God. We step out on faith. We open ourselves more to the joy and to the pain of this life and to the mystery of God. We become more like the children that we were. Well, children can teach us to be more open to God. They can show us what it means to trust God no matter what. And as adults, we can teach them what it means to have a relationship with God. The Bible tells us that Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Now, we know that because of the very place where Samuel was sleeping, in the temple of God, in front of the ark of God, that Samuel would have known about God, we know that Hannah, his mother, and Eli, his mentor, would have taught him about God. But knowing about God and knowing God are sometimes two very different things. We can know about math, but we aren't going to know how to do math until we spend time learning how. We can know about spaghetti, but... I know it's silly, but until we actually try spaghetti, we don't know what it tastes like. Now, I will tell you that I am guilty of saying that I don't like foods without trying them, so I guess I'm going to have to try them before I say that I know anything about them. We can know a lot of facts about God, but that doesn't mean that we know God. It doesn't mean that we have a relationship with God. Knowing Bible verses and Bible stories is important. They help us build a foundation, and they help us to learn about God. But in addition to teaching Bible stories and helping children memorize verses, we must also teach them about having a relationship with God. We must share how we have our own relationships with God and how we have built those. We must tell our stories of how God has shown up for us and how we trust that God is there. We must share the times when we felt like God wasn't there and the times when we knew without a doubt that God was. We must share how to spend time with God, how to talk to God, and how to listen to God. And we must share that it's okay to question God and to doubt Children tend to be curious by nature. If you have spent any time with a toddler, you know that their favorite question is why. Why is the grass green? Why is the sky blue? Why do I have to do this? Why do you do that? And that why may drive you crazy. But your child is busy learning more about the world. And that's how they're learning. Children may ask us uncomfortable or even sometimes unknowable questions about God. And instead of telling them not to question God, we should welcome their questions. They are trying to understand God better as they build a relationship with him. They are trying to learn more about God as they get to know him. 
and the more we encourage their curiosity, the more we let them ask questions and try to answer as best we can, knowing that sometimes there's just not an answer this side of heaven. I believe the more connected they will remain to God as they grow. You see when youth and college students and adults know that it's okay to ask questions and that there are times when each of us will doubt, they can rest more securely in their faith. When we give each other permission to question, we give each other permission to go deeper with God, to wrestle with God, and to grow in our faith. Sometimes we as adults are afraid to be curious. We are afraid to ask questions. Sometimes we're afraid to question God because we feel like if we do, everything may fall apart. Or we fear that it may show a lack of faith on our part. But God created us to be curious. Look at our children and how many questions they ask. God created us to be curious. God created us to ask questions. And when we ask questions, when we go deeper as we try to understand God, we lean more fully into our spiritual capacity that God created us to have. We will grow closer to God as we learn more about him. And what if, instead of trying to share our knowledge about God with children, we also asked children about their knowledge of God? What if assuming that we know more because we have lived longer, instead of doing that, we asked children who they think God is? What if we took the time to have a theological conversation with a child? After all, theology is the study of God. So really, any time you talk about God with a child, you're having a theological conversation. And Richard Stearns says that the beautiful simplicity of our faith is that it distills down to the exact same bottom line for both the brilliant theologian and the five-year-old child. Love God and love each other, period. Look at our children. Look at how they share God's love with others. Look at their generosity, their willingness to share, and the way that they help others. They are witnesses to the love of God and their openness to God, their willingness to listen to God and to love God wholeheartedly, their ability to trust God completely these are all things that we can learn to do all over again if we have forgotten how. And as we become more like children, as we make ourselves more open to God, as we practice trusting God more than we trust ourselves, and as we work toward loving God with our whole hearts, we can more fully bring about the kingdom of God. We are the church. We are made up of the very young and the very old and everyone in between. And as adults, we can teach our children who God is and what it means to have a relationship with God. And as children, you can teach the adults among us to be more open to God's call, to trust God more fully, and to not be afraid to share God's love with others. God called Samuel when he was just a boy. As one scholar said, we may be sure that God has a word for each and every one of us. Likewise, we may learn from young Samuel that no one is too small or too unimportant or too inexperienced to be used by God for difficult and important work. In fact, God seems to take particular delight in calling little people to do big things. No matter how young or old you are, God is calling you. And we know that when God calls us to do something, it will always be something we can do, even if it feels like we can't. And what God calls us to do will be something that brings us joy, even if it is unexpected. Look at the faith of our children. 
See how they trust in the Lord. Go and do likewise. Let us pray. Loving God, we are grateful for the faith of our children among us. Help us to trust you wholeheartedly. Help us to be open to your will for us. Help us to open our hearts and our lives to you. Remind us that you are always there with us. And if you call us to do something, you will give us what we need to do it. Help us to listen to your voice, O oh Lord. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.